Hey everybody, I'm about to catch a flight, so let's uh, get right to this. This is something that I've been talking about a lot. If you've been watching these videos, if you've been watching our uh, our, uh, our research or listening to our research, or if you've been watching our new uh, daily morning show uh, on YouTube, and that's gold. We all know gold's done really well, but I found something here, honestly, 24 hours ago that I really wasn't aware of as it relates to the correlation of semiconductor stocks, which we all know have had a tremendous move and gold and then other assets that I'm going to show you here and what it really means for a potential pent up demand for gold miners and silver here on going forward. So let's look at this and um, I'm gonna keep this chart a bit small here at the top. I'm, I'm hoping you can still see it, but what you're looking here, looking at here, I should say, at the top is semiconductor stocks. This is the SOX index. This is a monthly chart, so big picture, okay? And it, this really matters. Uh, I'll, I'll make the point here in just a second as it relates to the correlation. So you can see the semiconductor stocks really broke out after a check, a checking back to support in 2020. So that's basically just around COVID. They started to break out uh, a year prior then COVID brought them back to support and then they've been off uh, to the races since. And basically since that point, they're roughly up, still up about 250, 60, 70, 80%. You know, we can, uh, the rounding errors at that point, big, big numbers. What's really interesting to me, and we all know that gold's done really well here today. So let me reveal the second chart. This is the price of gold. I'm looking at the GLD ETF. And what I find fascinating, what I was not aware of is that the breakout that actually occurred with semiconductor stocks uh, in, um, as I said, April 2020, also coincided with essentially a fake breakout in gold. So it was classical risk on, so gold couldn't get going uh, in that risk on environment because everything was amazing. You know, obviously we threw a lot of money at, at uh, COVID and so, uh, so on and so forth. And then gold started breaking out, essentially call that three, and a half or three and a quarter years later or so, as semiconductor stocks basically started to lose momentum. Not bad, remember these companies are still making a lot of money and they're growing, but they're growing less quickly now. And so at least for the time being, right, that, that can reaccelerate, but for the time being, that's what's happening. And so in many ways, we can kind of look at it this way and say, okay, that um, semiconductor stocks have kind of, have kind of uh, passed uh, the baton to gold. And so gold had a big move. We all know that gold had a really big move. Gold is up year to date. Um, I can show you this uh, with this chart here. Let me show you that. Sorry for the back and forth. But here is a good comparison of all of this. And then we'll, we'll get to the, to the, to the point. Uh, you can see year to date as I'm recording this gold or the GLD up 27%. Uh, semiconductors are still up 10% uh, more than that. And I say still because I, there's Still obviously a lot of uh, play left in the year. And then uh, gold miners, which I'll get to in a minute, are actually outperforming gold. And they're right in between basically gold and semiconductor. Because I would not be surprised if they start catching up here. Although, again, the timing here is a bit difficult. But um, I'm, tr I'm trying to make the point here right now. So that's semiconductors. That's gold. And again, there's, a, a in my view, a pretty logical sequence here that I'm, I'm hopefully able to, to bring across as to how this all played out. Now let's get to the things that I think are next to move, right? That's all that we all care about is what's the next move. And that's gold mining. Again, I've talked about this a lot over the past, uh, particularly the past few days, the past few few months. And I'm going to talk a lot more about it here going forward because I think we're now at the point where this could start to happen. So again, semiconductor stocks at the top, gold second. Now let's look at gold miners. And here is what gold miners look like. So in many ways, gold miners are really just kind of breaking out at this point right now or at least started breaking out in some fashion earlier this summer um early this past summer this summer of 2022 and then you know gold miners and then of course we have to correlate to that to some extent uh because it matters from a correlation perspective is silver and so if we draw somewhat similar and again all these these asset classes have different you know sort of support and resistance lines so it's it's difficult to make the same exact line but you can kind of see that silver to Silver 2 is now getting going roughly at a similar, if not the same time as gold miners are trying to make a move. So to me, there's a pretty logical sequence here where I think gold, again, I, I personally, I'm long gold. I, I haven't sold any, although I'm considering selling some and adding some to gold miners and, and maybe silver. 
Um, but I think this is a pretty interesting story as, as, as it relates to this. Now, the question, of course, is how do we generate income from gold and gold miners and these kind of things? We can do something uh, called a poor man's covered call or even a covered call and, and generate income in, in two ways from that. If you like the idea of this and, and, and or like the idea of generating income in general from any stock that you may own or that you're interested in without necessarily having to own the stock or withholding the stock either way, uh, we're holding a special education session this week. Uh, my colleague Brian Terry and I will show you exactly how that works. I hope, I hope to see you there.